Hello and welcome to my channel ACR MRCP. I am Dr. Aparajita Roy and through this channel I bring to you exclusive tips and tricks that will help you pass your MRCP in the first attempt. Today's video is very special as we will talk about ophthalmoscopy today. So let's get started. So today's video is divided into two parts. First, I will discuss the basics of ophthalmoscopy and then I will demonstrate how to perform an ophthalmoscopic examination as will be expected from you in the PACES exam. Also, from this video onwards, I am introducing a new section. Often, many of you ask me questions through YouTube comments or Facebook which I feel that may be relevant to many of you who want to come and work in the UK. So, I have decided that in each of my videos, I will pick one such question and discuss so that all of you are benefited from it. So keep watching this video till the end as I will discuss the question and the answer right at the end of this video. Remember in the exam, if you are expected to do a fundus examination, an ophthalmoscope will be supplied by the organizers by the bedside of the patient. However, you are allowed to carry your own ophthalmoscope if you are more comfortable with carrying your own instrument in the exam. First, let's get acquainted with the parts of an ophthalmoscope. So this is my ophthalmoscope that I use. This is where the batteries go in. This is the switch to turn the ophthalmoscope on and off. Now look closely, there are two knobs. One is here and the other is on the other side of the ophthalmoscope. This is very important. This is the only button or only knob that you have, will have to use during your examination. I'll come to that in a moment. This is the knob to adjust the light settings of the ophthalmoscope. So this is how we switch it on. This is the setting of light that we will use for fundus examination in paces. Also, look closely at this knob. And if you look closely, you can see that you can read numbers inside this. This is very important. This knob is to match your refraction with the patient's refraction. If either of you wear glasses during the examination, you will have to take off your glasses. And with this knob, you will have to adjust that is match your refraction with your patient's refraction to get the sharpness of the fundus image. This is very important. So while examining, you have to keep your finger on this knob steady all throughout during the examination. And you have to match. So you have to rotate this one by one until the refraction of your eye is matched with the refraction of your patient's eye and the image, the fundus image is sharp. Your examiners are going to notice this and by this they will understand whether you have actually used an ophthalmoscope before or not. So now let's understand step by step what you will do when you start your fundus examination. Number one is consent. You have to explain to the patient what you are about to do and seek consent from him. Number two, remember fundus examination starts with general inspection of the eyes. Just a quick look, don't waste a lot of time in inspection of the eyes. Just to see whether there is any obvious ptosis or whether there is any lateral or medial deviation of the eyes. And then without wasting much time, jump into the fundus examination. Now, when you start the fundus examination, first and foremost, you have to look at the red reflex. If the red reflex is absent, that means that there is some obstruction between your light source and the retina. Most commonly, it would be cataract or vitreous hemorrhage. If the red reflex is normal, then you may proceed with the rest of your fundus examination. Now you need to understand what are the things that you're looking for in your fundus examination. Keep it very simple. Remember in the PACES exam, the examiners are not looking for experts in ophthalmoscopy. Comment on what is barn door in the fundus examination and don't go into too much details. Start with any vessel that you see and trace that vessel medially until you reach the optic disc. Look closely at the optic disc 
and then also look at the retina surrounding the optic disc. Once you have done that, the last step is asking the patient to look into the light so that you can look into the macula. That's it. Remember, fundus examination will be a small part of other examinations that you have to do. Don't waste too much time on it. And keep practicing until you master the technique of fundus examination so that you don't waste a lot of time in finding the vessels or tracing the vessels or looking into the macula. Now, I will demonstrate to you how to do a fundus examination step by step for your basis examination. The first step is to ask for consent of the patient and then explain the whole procedure to him. Hello sir, my name is Dr. Roy. Is it alright if I examine you today? Yeah, okay. I am going to look into the back of your eyes through this instrument. Okay. I am going to come quite close to you and will shine a bright light into your eyes. It may be a bit uncomfortable. Please let me know if it gets too uncomfortable for you and I will stop. Please can I ask you to take off your glasses, sir? Yes. And at this point, I will just do a brief and quick inspection of the eyes. You may also request the examiners to dim the lights of the room. The patient's pupil will already be dilated. So now we have switched on our ophthalmoscope. We'll close one eye, put our hand on the knob and ask the patient to look straight. And then remember, right eye of the patient, my right eye and my right hand. Please keep looking straight. Focus the light on the eye of the patient and look for the red reflex. Once you have found the red reflex, zero in on the eye of the patient and use the other hand to lift up the eyelid. Focus on the retina till you see a vessel. Use your right index finger to adjust for the refractive power of the patient and match it to your own refractive power. Once you have got a clear sharp image of the fundus, trace the vessel medially to reach up to the optic disc. Now once you have reached the optic disc, look at it very closely and then inspect the other quadrants of the retina. Finally, ask the patient to look towards the source of the light. Please can you look towards the light, sir? And that is when you look at the macula. And then you are done with the right side. Now. The same thing on the left side. I stand on the left side of the patient and for the left eye of the patient, I use my left hand to hold the ophthalmoscope to examine with my left eye. The rest of the examination remains exactly the same. See, that wasn't too difficult, right? So guys, please don't be anxious with fundus examination. It's all about practice. So keep practicing guys until your entire examination sequence is very fluid and fluent. Now, it's time to answer one of your questions. Now, recently one of you asked me a very important question about OET. Whether OET is required for MRCP examination or not. That is a very valid question and let me put it this way. If you just want to do MRCP, OET or ILTS or English language tests are not required. English language tests like OET or ILTS are only required if you want to come and work in the UK. After doing just MRCP part 1, if you have the relevant qualifications, you can come and work in the UK through the MTI scheme. For that, you will be needing your OAT or ILTS, but not otherwise. That's it for today guys. Please let me know in the comment section below how you like this video. If you did find this video useful, please like, share and subscribe to my channel so that I stay motivated to make more such videos for you. Till then, keep studying, stay safe and ace your MRCP.